Welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, as you can see, I've got the 65 Thunderbird hardtop in here. And uh, you might also notice I have the back seat out of it. Back seat, the uh, back and the, and the bottom. So I want to get this car ready for the season. So it needs some cleaning all, all around. Wheels need to be clean, sides need to be cleaned. Now we want to redo the top again with that black topper, even though, as you can see, it's in pretty good shape. But we'll redo it again because we have some of that black topper stuff left. Also, I want to get the rear windows working. So I have them down right now. I need to take the windows out and then clean them all up. They go up and down, but very slow. So um, very, very slow. Assisted, you can pull them up and they'll go up pretty quick. But uh, I want to clean them all up, change those little pucks in the drive. Also, there's a small hole in the floor that I want to patch up. And that's the only hole on this floor back in this area. Like, this car is solid. Uh, I think anybody that's been following this channel already knows that. I did the front floor pans. Uh, the driver's side was worse than the passenger side, but I built new floor pans and put them in it. Hey, if you're interested, go back and look at those videos if you're new to, new to this channel. Uh, you may find it interesting, especially if you're an old Thunderbird person. By the way, I got lots of old Thunderbird videos. If you're new to this channel, you might be interested in. Go back and take a look. There's other guys that have done this. Uh, Nick, Vintage Fun Thunderbird Repair, he did a really good video on, on, on the uh, re uh, restoration of those old windows. I'm just going to do a cleanup. It's just going to be a getting to run up and down smooth. I'm not going to go into the depth that Nick did. He, did, he replaced the... Uh, cat whiskers or the felts and everything. Uh, motors are problematic in these, uh, they'll stick, but my motors are working uh, and they seem to be working fairly smooth. It's just that the tracks themselves, probably the, the whole regulator itself needs to be cleaned up and redone. So let's, let's get a window out. Uh, probably, I don't know which side, whichever side, maybe the driver's side, it doesn't matter. And like I said, this isn't gonna be like a restoration of the window, this is just getting it cleaned up so it'll work smoother. Uh, and making sure the track's clean, making sure that the regulator is cleaned up and all that kind of thing. So let's get one out, see what we can do with it. All right, so here we are. So I already have the trim removed for this car, all the, the interior parts like that. So we're down now to just the, uh, the quarter window itself. And there's this plate that goes over it. So it's a half inch socket. So let's get that off and see what we have there. Save the, save the bolts and stuff. You'll need them for the reassembly. So at the top, there's a bolt, the nut bolt. And then over here, there's two bolts. Now these back ones are on slots. So you can just loosen them and pull this forward. But I want to take them out because they, uh, as you saw, they're, they're a little dry. I want to put a little uh, never seize on them or anti seizing stuff. So now that you have these upper ones off, there's one down at the bottom. It's on the bracket. There's a uh, L shaped bracket that goes into the frame rail. So I'll see if I can get this one out. There, that one came out pretty easy. I, I did put some uh, deep creep on it yesterday, so it, it's all done. Now it's this window how this window assembly is kind of just floating there, but at the top there's a couple of bolts. Now there's one kind of tucked behind the window here, and I'm hoping I can get at it just by pulling the window back a little bit. Right there. There it is, yeah. So you just gotta hold the window back a tiny bit. And then there's one more over here. And I think that's all that holds them in. I have already undone the electricals for it. So there's the electrical right there, electrical plug. So that should just let me pull this window right out now. There's really not a lot holding these in there. Now, there we go. And that is right there, the window assembly. Well, there we have it. One window assembly out. This one's in pretty darn good shape. It needs to be cleaned up. So let's get it over. We'll find a spot on the workbench. I'll clean a spot on the workbench and we'll uh, get this cleaned up. We'll take the window apart, the whole assembly, see what's going on inside, clean up the tracks. I wanted to point out, 
point out as well the difference between a hard top and a convertible side window. These uh, quarter, quarter windows, sail windows, whatever you want to call them. On the uh, convertible, it's not flat on top like that. It comes up to it comes up almost to a round, like it curves around. So these windows on a convertible aren't the same as the hard top. So if you have a set of convertible windows, treat them gently because there's a lot less of those out there than there are hard top ones. So they are different. So you can't use the hard top windows in a convertible. Well, you could use them, but they aren't going to fit. <laughs> Anyway, let's get this on a workbench and see what we can do with it. Well, there, we found a spot on the bench. I had to clear her off a bit. I had a couple of jobs on the go, helping the young fellow across the street with his Dodge van. His, he's uh, building a camper van, or he actually built it and he's using it, but he had, he had a few things he needed to get done he wasn't sure of, so I helped him out. He's a great kid. He, he does our walkways in the winter. Don't even have to ask him. He just, just does it. And he's not a kid. He's his mid to late 20s. So uh, really, really good young man. I like to try to pay back. I, I work with the neighbors the best I can and uh, help them out where I can. Anyway, so we got a spot cleared on the bench. So I just want to go through what's in this. Of course, there's the glass. There, there, there's the glass in there. Remember, that's another thing. Always remember, you, you do have glass. <laughs> there's the motor right there. And this is the bottom frame that holds the glass in. And there's a track here. There's a track there and a track there. And there's a track down in there. And all those tracks are, when the window's down, are right at the end. Well, this is a, a guide track. And this one up here, they will, I think there's actually a, a felt track up further too. There's a lot going on in these windows. Yeah, and there's also a felt guide track up here. So there's, there's two felt guide tracks and three, three tracks that the rollers in them. This one here, this one here, and this one down there. So there's a lot of tracks, piece of glass, the motor, and the window regulators all in there. And they're all tied together. But what holds them all in are the uh, bolts here for the motor. So with the window all the way down or up, it doesn't matter, but down, it's more compact. And if your window's up, that's the way it is. You have to take it out the way it is. So these four bolts here hold that whole assembly in on those tracks. So the tracks guide it, this holds it all in. So let's get those bolts out and uh, see if we can slide this out of its tracks. So, all right, I'm not gonna take the tracks out. So I'm only gonna take these four bolts out to pull the whole uh, regulator and window assembly out of the case. These other bolts are to hold the tracks in. I'm not touching those right now unless I absolutely have to. So let's get at her. And a half inch again. And these are only just little short, little short bolts. Set them aside. Don't lose them. You'll need them. Good. Now, in theory, <laughs> if everything goes well, this should slide right out. Hope you can still see me. Yep. So remember, you're dealing with glass. So if you plan to do this and you're not that familiar with this stuff, here it comes. Now, nothing's going to spring in this at this point because the regulator is all locked into the glass. All right, let me get this out of here. I may have to hold it up with the vise. All right, oh, just gonna pull it up. There it goes. And there's the regulator coming out with the glass. So let me get this out of here and I'll set the case aside for now. And we'll take a look at this glass and regulator. All right, so Just looking at it here closely, a little bit of dirt on there, but that's probably from years and years. So on this side, which this is the front toward the front, and this is toward the back of the car, there's some uh, guide rollers here. Then they're, they're pretty gummy. That's, we'll go in these tracks that I showed you. And then on the other side is the regulator. So the regulator, I wanna take it all apart. So just kind of remember how it all fit together. This one looks to be in good shape. The spring has been greased up. It's just like brand new. 
and the motor I know works. So I think it's more than, li more than likely it's just these guide rollers that are ha giving us the problem here. Anyhow, I'm going to pull it off. I'll get, there's a, if you can see that, right down there. I'm going to move you down a bit. There's a, uh, a clip hairpin, not a hairpin, but similar to a hairpin clip. I'll pull that off and I can lift the regulator off there and I can move that glass out of the way to keep it from getting hurt. So let's just uh, see if we can get this little clip out without too much trouble. I'm going to grab a pair of pliers. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pair of needle nose. Get this clip off here. Don't lose it like I almost did. There you go. There's a clip. Usually you would never find that flew across the floor. So I want to get this regulator off there. And that should just pull right off. I'll set that aside and I'll get rid of this glass too for now. Just for now. We're going to clean all this up before we put it back together. And there's those rollers that need to be cleaned up. All right. So let's set aside in the same place. So now what do we have here? So we have this regulator. Now it's very gummy. If you can see that. Yeah. So this is a little stiff here. This is most likely a little stiff because it's very gummy. But I want to get this regulator off the motor off of the regulator. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to have to run the motor out and it's going to that's when you'll get the tension on the spring you have to deal with. Because there's a uh, there's there's two bolts there for the motor that joins the regulator. And there's another bolt behind this arm. So I need to move this and I need to get the tension off the spring. Take note how the spring is put in. This spring is well covered in grease. It's not rusty a bit. Um, so that spring should be in good shape. I'll clean it up and regrease it. But I want to get in, into this drive, this worm drive. So let's get this in the vise. And we'll get this uh, regulator off of the worm drive. I just have to move it so it releases the tension from the spring. And again, I'll always remember how your spring goes in. I don't think you can make a mistake on that, but there's a way to put it back together. You have to preload it. We'll do that when the time comes. So let's get her in the vise. This motor has to turn this arm this way. So when it gets almost to the end of this, it's going to want to snap. So I have to be careful of that. So let me get my power pack and we'll get power set up. I've got my uh, vise clamp down. So now I can hang on to this regulator arm and I'm just going to let me give it a little more tension on that. So now I'm just going to hold it while it comes around. Oh, I lost my connection. Of course, that was a little bit of a delay. I had a bad uh, connection. So that brings me to another thing on my ground on that uh, shielded one of the three prong plug that ground needs to be cleaned because clearly it's having an issue. So, I'll have to make sure I brush that out really well and clean it because that could be some of the reason why we're having trouble with this motor off the actual console switch is the actual electricals itself. Because I, I know the motor works. So let's try this again. There it goes. So like I said, this is going to kick. This is where you can get hurt on these ones. Now I'm just a little nervous of it, but let me see what happens. There it goes. So you can hold the tension. It's not that bad. So you can see what I'm doing there. It didn't kick much. So the spring that's quite gummied up in there. I can feel it. There's a lot of tension on it. That should move really freely. So what's going on is when you go to put it back together and we'll go through this is that you'll reverse the mo the motion and you'll have the window going in the down position and you'll hold up on this with the spring in place and then hit the button or whatever you can get somebody to assist you and then it'll feed that back in that regulator back into the motor and that's how you pre your preload is right here so it's not terrible but uh if you're this one's sticky so it took a lot of the tension off now maybe i'm over explaining this i don't know but this is the only part in here that you could actually hurt yourself if you're not aware of and if you just let it go free it'll flop and hit and make a noise probably scare you a little bit. I know it did the first time I ever took one apart, but anyway, yeah. So reverse order is reverse the electricals, bring it up and use your 
however you connections, however you use your connections, and let it feed back in. Once it's fed back in, there's no danger of it. But at this point right here is where you have to be careful of. You know what? While I've got it sitting here all hooked up, I've reversed the leads. So I put the the uh, yellow lead or the red lead, sorry, on the center pin of that three prong plug. And let's just try it. So you, this is how you do the preload. Pull up on it and like that. And that's it. She's in there. So let's uh, reverse it and take it off again. So it's reversed and that's it. So there's your preload. Anybody wants to know how to do the preload? Very simple. Just to keep you from getting frightened, just, just hang on to it. There's not a great amount of tension on that, but you want to make sure it clamped in well. All right, so let's get back to the task at hand is getting that apart. So we got the tension off of it. It's disconnected from here. So I'm going to leave that all intact, this all, all the regulator intact for now, and we'll take this motor off. So I want to put this in the bucket here once I get it all apart. So let me get a socket for that. It looks like three eighths, but I'm not sure. And that's all there is to that. So keep all the bolts together so you don't lose them. So these little, little bolts can go there. And then this comes off and I'll get this clean. I might use the ultrasonic cleaner on that, but I don't know. It's mostly painted. It's not rusted at all. And there is a gasket. I should make sure this gasket. Uh, no, this one's not on there. Yeah, there's a gas. No, there isn't a gasket on this one. That's all one plastic piece. Generally, there's a gasket that goes inside of here. And it doesn't matter. That's one piece. It'll have to be cleaned up. So don't try not to break any of these things because I think I think you can get them again, but I'm not 100% sure. So you can see, I don't know, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't see it. This grease is, look, this grease is just, it's hardened up. Mind you, this motor was still working, but any kind of drag on these don't help you any. So now we're going to get the, uh, the drive out of here. So we can clean up. So this is the worm called the worm drive. So there's a shaft here with a uh, pinion on it. And then this is the, the ring gear here. So like a like a rear end in a car. I'll see if I can get this off. It looks rusty in there. So this may be take a little bit of prying and you don't want to break any of this stuff if you can avoid it. So what I think I might do is bath that in some cleaner. So let me go, let me get some cleaner geared up and I'll bath that in there and some, just some Varsol. All right. So let's get the little bit of mineral spirits. All I'm using is Varsol. You can buy the cheaper stuff. It works just as well. I ended up buying this cause it didn't have any of the just mineral spirits, but Varsol is a, is a brand. Let's put a little in here. We're going to do a bit of cleaning anyway. That's probably enough. And this stuff works really well on grease. So. Get right in there. This is all coming apart anyway, so you'll be able to clean it all out after. Just get rid of some of that old grease. All right. There she comes. All right, so you might have a little bit of Varsol in there. You can see how this is moving back and forth. Hopefully you can still see me. Yeah, you can. So you grab this wheel, it may take a little bit. I'm going to shove this aside and this whole wheel assembly will come out. So it leaves the, the worm drive right there. So there's the worm drive. So all that's going to go back in the bucket. Try to keep the motor. These motors are sealed, but try to keep it up out of the, out of there the best you can. Oh, I should show you the worm drive. So that right there is the worm drive, the pinion of the worm drive. All right, so now what we're focusing on here, look how dirty that is, holy moly. So we'll continue cleaning this up. And once we get that all cleaned off, we can, we can inspect the, uh, the, the cog itself, because if it's worn, you might want to get a new one. This one feels good, but you don't know until you get them apart. 
Okay, uh, next day, uh, I went ahead and cleaned up all the parts, the regulator, got it all blown out. They have sort of a, the regulator has like a uh, thrust bearing inside there. I don't know what it's made of. I don't want to take it apart. It's all pressed together, so not much we can do about it. The uh, window regulator, or window motor rather, and the worm gear, I cleaned that all out, but I'm going to do a little more to this. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute. Got my spring cleaned up, all the bolts right there, the cover. And yes, there is a gasket in this. It was buried under grease, but I found it. I just left it on there. And this little clip that's right here, don't lose that little clip. You're not going to get that at the hardware store. Probably not going to find that in too many places. Anyway, make sure you have the clip. Put it in your pocket if you have to, but hang on to it. Now, get to this drive gear. So this drive gear here is a rubber mounted one. So there's a rubber between the actual large gear, which is for the worm gear. And this is the part that runs on the regulator. So it's got a rubber cushioning. So there's three different types of these. There's this one, and there's the one that takes these little white dowels, which actually are readily available, the whole assembly, or just the dowels. So, if you do need a new one of these, say this got ripped apart, because they do come apart on the top here, these will separate. I would just go get one of the ones that take these dowels because they're so much easier to get a hold of and they're not even that expensive, they're cheap. Now, <clears throat> there's one more type. I'm gonna have, I have pictures up on all these. I'll put pictures up as I'm talking. Um, there's one more that has rub, uh, springs in it. It's a metal housing with springs in it that connects this all together. Uh, apparently those aren't the best. So I'll, my understanding of that is to avoid those ones. But the white plastic ones that take those dowels, that's the one you can get and they're most readily available. And they've used those in Ford cars like all through the years, right from the time they, well, right from they moved away from this type up uh, in the years they uh, went with that white plastic one. Now there's a process of putting those together, putting those dowels back in, because there's two, it's a two, it's actually a, these, these are two pieces, and then, then the dowels go in little three slots, like in that. So there's a process on how to put those together, and I did a video on that, so if I think of it, at the end of this video, I'll put it as the, the video to go watch next in the, at the final, final part of this video. All right, we talked about the, worm, the uh, gear drive and all the bolts, the springs, and all that jazz. Regulator. So now we have these motor. Well, these motors are uh, completely sealed in rubber. And I don't really want to take this one all apart to show you the bits and bobs in it. But what I will do is test it to make sure it's running free. And I'm going to take this uh, end bolt out that just keeps the worm gear from wandering. So it doesn't wear, the, doesn't wear the, the, the cog or the gear. If this is giving me problems, yes, I'll have to take it apart. But if it runs fine, I'm just gonna leave it and I'm gonna spray a little bit of a uh, super lube down in there. Cause there's an O-ring in your boat here on the shaft. Past that, it should, be, it should always be good. But these do get gummed up right in this uh, shaft area. So if this one's not running right, We'll have, we will have to take it apart, but I don't really want to. So let's put it in the vise and see if we can get it to spin. All right, so we're all set up. Let's test this out, see what's going on in there. Now this should run smooth, and if it's not, we'll have to do something to make it smooth. And like I said, there's an O-ring read in here, so any kind of a problem, it's probably from the O-ring out. It's a little noisy, so it's dry in there. So I'm gonna have to take this, uh, nut off the end and pull that screw out. So this one's all sealed together, so there's no danger and it's still bolted together. So this whole end cap is still bolted together. So I don't really want, like I said, I don't really want to take this all apart, but I do need to do something with that vibration in there. So let me, uh, let me take this bolt off and this, this end cap screw out and go from there. So that's a 5 8 knot on there. I take this off and I had a screwdriver here somewhere. Now I got to find my screwdriver. All right, so I got the knot off. 
I got my screwdriver. I'm going to back this out. And this is just there to keep this worm gear from moving back and forth. So, but there's something vibrating down in there. I don't like the sound of that. If I'm going to do this, I may as well do it uh, half right anyway. Come on out of there. It's long. So all it is, it's, uh, it's like a screw with a, that's dry too. So that might help just by lubricating that uh, little cupped area where the end of the shaft goes in like that. So we'll see. So now I'm going to get some uh, lube and put down in there, see if I can quieten this motor down some, and I'll lube the end of that shaft up. I'll get some uh, molly grease for that. Okay, so I've got some super lube, liquid wrench super lube, and I'm just going to turn this motor up a little bit so I can get some down in there. I don't want to take this motor apart because it's completely sealed, and it's nice to have the factory seal as long as you can keep it. So if I can get this motor quietened down on here, <clears throat> then that's what I'll go with. I'm going to I don't want to take that steel off either. So I'm going to run a little bit of uh, super lube in there while I'm running the motor. I'll give it a little bit and then I'll run the motor. So a liquid wrench super lube. And you're not going to hurt anything that right now. Come on, get in there. There we go. So I'll just bath that in there for a little bit. It's already sounding better. So now I'm going to turn it downward because I don't want that stuff to get, if it happens to get by the, the O-ring, I don't want it going down in the motor. There. Now that shaft is hooked, that's part of the armature in the motor, so you're not, that's not going to fall out on you. But if you take these if you need to take this motor apart now there's a whole different process involved here so you have to cut the rubbers off slit the the seam here and get yourself something to hold the uh, shaft in hold it in like that and when you're pulling this head off you got to hold that shaft in because you don't want that armature to slip off of uh, outside of the brushes in back here because it's very difficult to get them back on. Now I did it in a video when I did the, uh, the replacement of these pucks. Where the, where the pucks go? In my video that I putting at the end of this, uh, tagging at the end of this video where I replaced these pucks, I did have the motor part and I was able to get the brushes back in, but it's not a simple task. So if you don't have to, if this is all that you're looking for, this whole head will come off. So when you cut the rubber and you can get it to come off freely after you undo these two uh, long screws that go right through, you can pull this head off, but hold that shaft in with something. This is good enough right here, the little glue brush. It's just to hold it in. Anyway, I think I talked too much about it. It's overkill on that already. So let's uh, see if we can get this going here. Clean it out good. Look at the dirt coming out of there. Look, huh? So you might want to do this too. Just to clean it all up nice, why not, right? You're here. That sounds better already. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my little brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, molly grease right there on that cap, just to keep that lubricated because that seemed dry in there, very dry. We'll put that back in. So with this, when you're uh, putting these back in, you don't want tension on this. You just want to bring it in to the shaft. So you get it all the way in. So you'll feel it when it hits. So I'm already on the shaft there now. So I'll back it up about an eighth of a turn and try it. Oh yeah, that's much better. So. You can kind of adjust it with it running. See, changing it. Right there, that's where it's running nice. So I'm gonna put the nut back on. 
and it'll hold it with the, with the screwdriver and put the nut back on. Now these nuts are, I don't, I don't think they're rounded on one side, the same on both sides, but you should check that just in case. So you want to hold that, but you can adjust it a little bit as you're putting it in if you get it at a whack. So you don't want that to wind that back down where you just adjusted it off of. Let's try it here. I'll try it. If it's too tight, I'll back it out again. I think that seems a little too tight. I think I moved it just a hair in. Let me try that. There it goes. But on the other hand, you don't want it any any play any more than any play in the movement from end to end on the on the worm drive because it, any amount of play will start wearing this cog out. So that seems pretty good right there. Sounds good, much better than it was. So I'm happy with that. Time for assembly. So what I'm using here, and you saw me use it on that uh, end shaft screw, is Molly Extreme Pressure Grease. Now it may be a little heavy for this, but I don't think so. I think that's what was kind of in there. So I'll take a bunch of that, and I'm gonna fill this up with a bunch of it. You want everything lubed up nice. Alright, I'll lube the gears up pretty good, load all the gears up with it. Put some on the back, even though I, I put lots in the inside the housing. Just put a bunch in there. Okay, get back at her. I got the uh, I get interrupted there. So, getting lots of grease on this. I'm gonna put a little more on. I'm gonna grease the shaft up on this. And the shaft, I took uh, some emery cloth and cleaned up the shaft a bit. There we go, get this get lathered up nice. That should be enough. And I'll get a little more in around the gear drive. Good, I think that'll do her. Not going to worry about the uh, the uh, regulator drive at all right now because the less you can put on those things, the better it is for dust. So let's try. Oh, I got it all unhooked. So that we know it works. All right. So the next step is the gasket's already on there. So let's put this sleeve on like so. And there's little tabs in the bottom for that. Now, I'll take it out of there. Let me get it out of the vise and we'll put the uh, regulator on. We'll put the motor on the regulator. So I put the motor on the regulator. I've got the arm. So when it's when in the, when the window's all the way down, that's how it sits like that. So you want to get this up out of the way. Remember how we took it off. So let that flop up there. And then we'll get the motor on. The motor goes sticking out the end, like so. Put it down on the table, get some bolts. All right. Get those started and I'll get my uh, eights again or eight millimeter whatever I'm using there and I give it a little sip in you don't want to hammer these in tight with the impact there just loosely I'll grab a three eighths wrench and I'll just snug those up with the three eighths actually that's not three eighths that's eight millimeter I said wasn't it so that's five sixteenths these are five sixteenths there's a five sixteenths. There, just firm. You don't need to 
gorilla them in. All right, so that's done. So now we want to put that spring back on. So we're going to lube that spring up too once we, once we get it on there. I hope you guys can see me. So I get the spring on. So you put the spring in place like so and just grab it and flip it along. So there's no tension on it. See, that's all the way down. So now I get something to set it up on so you guys can see what's going on here. All right, so I'm gonna grease that up some more and grease the spring all up. There we go, it's a nice gob of it. That's kind of what was on there before. It was a big gob of this grease. There, spring is greased. There we go. She's all greased up. So now what we're gonna do we're going to uh, reload that unit back onto the drive gear. So what we'll be doing is this and we'll, uh, we'll crank that back up and then that'll flip all the way around the other way. All right, let's preload this. We'll get that arm back up and I've got the motor in the center pin. There she is. And that's all there is to it. So I'll get it around. I'll have to clear, clear this a bit. Then we'll bring it all the way around. So that's in the, all the way in the down position again. Well, that's good. So that's done. So let's move on to the, uh, the window itself and clean up those little knobs there, those little rollers. So now I'm gonna clean up the window a tiny bit, just get the frame cleaned up. A little bit of LA Awesome in uh, water. So let me get this done and then we'll reassemble this sucker. So well, there we go, we cleaned the window up a bit. So now it's time to clean this housing up. So let's give it a clean down too. Same deal, little to uh, LA, totally awesome. All right, you guys, let me get this cleaned up and I'll get back to you. So I gave the body of this thing a wipe down and uh, I'm not super fond of these, how dirty these tracks are inside of here. So there's the three tracks. I don't know if you guys can see them. The track there, track there, and track there. These two tracks are hooked together and that's a single track. So what I think I'm gonna do, they're not adjustable, they're just fixed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them out, clean them all up in some mineral spirits and uh, lube them up, put them back in. So. The same as before, these are uh, they're half inch. I think that's the best to do. We come this far, we might as well do it all, do it right. As far as a refreshment job anyway. And like I say, you can't get them in wrong because uh, there's only one way for them to go in. So these tracks are really actually condition wise, they're really nice. It's just that I, I didn't feel comfortable putting, I didn't feel comfortable putting it back together with this old uh, grease that's in there. So I'm gonna clean that all out. So I'm gonna take both tracks out and do that. The uh, felt tracks, I'm gonna leave in. I'll just blow them out with some air. So I got these ready to be cleaned up. So let me get those cleaned up and then I'll get some paint on that body, clean up those felt tracks some and we'll reinstall this thing. That is cleaned up nice. I'm glad I did it. I think even uh, if you're having windows that are slow going up and down and they're kind of catching, even just cleaning these slides, if you do nothing else, will make a big difference. These, these guides, because they're, they are really nice now, nice and clean. So now I have to put a little lube in. I'm gonna give them a quick lube with the Molly grease, but I was thinking while I was doing it, that uh, lube that you can buy for uh, RVs, for the slide outs to lubricate the tracks, I think that would work good in there because it doesn't collect dust. Uh, this car won't be out too much in the dust, so I think the Molly, a little wipe with Molly will be just fine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through them because there wasn't much on them. It was just a wipe that was all that was all that was in the, these when uh, I took it apart. But this one here was filled with dirt, so that tells me it was collecting some of the some dust. All right, so I'm going to give them a little coating with the Molly, but it'll be light, sort of like what I have on there now. Uh, just to give it a little lube 
And then I'm going to I'm going to paint that sand that case, paint it up, and then we'll get her back together in the next step. Okay, I get the uh, I gave the tracks a good greasing. Now I'm just going to sand this up a bit, give it some uh, rust paint, and that'll be good. The shell or the case all put back together. I gave it a bit of a paint job. Little tip there if you want it to dry quicker uh, and get rid of the moisture. Go over it with a torch lightly and you'll see the moisture just chasing away. It's a little cool in the shop today. It's not even uh, 20 degrees and I have the door open. So I gave it a little heat and now she's drying off. Okay, I've got the window ready to go in. <laughs> so now this is a bit finicky, especially when you're by yourself. So you need to get the front uh, kind of like this. You need everything kind of sitting like that to start with. Hopefully you can see that. And try to get the front of the window There's a, in, that, uh, in that felt track. If you don't, it won't, it won't go in evenly. And even then it can be a bit struggly. And you got to get the motor in the in the right spot. All right. It takes kind of a, a bit of finessing. But don't force it like don't don't pound on it and stuff like that. Just kind of wiggle it in. There it goes there. There. All right. So now you've got these tracks that you have to line up. So this roller goes on this track. And there's another track in there and then this back roller goes in here so you just gotta and make sure that you're on the felt track up top here when it gets in all the way you can get your hand in and kind of manipulate the motor motor wants to catch on everything all right Oh yeah, let's see, what's that catching on there now? The light from the outside shining right, oh, there it is, that one in there. The light from the outside is shining right in my eyes so I can't see anything. All right. Not going on that back roller and I can't see with that door open because all I see is sunlight in my eyes there we go all right so all right pull it up the motor's down in position now I can just get it all to slip in there now and get on its rollers Sounds easy, doesn't it? Like the motor needs to be up in the front a bit. Huh. Oh, yeah, I got the window all cockeyed here. There she goes. It's on all of them. Yep, on all of them. There. A little bit fiddly, but it can be done. There it comes. Motor fall down. That's what's going on. All right. Now. 
There. You can probably see that one. There we go. Oh, I know what's going on. The, the back of the window regulator is sticking in and I can't. So if I pull it out like this, now I have room to work. It's sitting up on the window regulator, the, the drive cog. <laughs> Dummy. I don't know if you can see that or not, but what's going on. I'll show you in a second. I get these started. All right, so what was going on there was the window regulator. The drive sprocket on the window regulator was uh, hitting on the bench. Wouldn't let me align the bolts. But anyway, we got her in there now. I'm just going to snug them and I'm going to tighten them by hand with a wrench. That's her. All right, so I thought I'd throw it back in the Thunderbird to see uh, how it's going to fit. Uh, so yeah, I'm just doing the adjustments right here now. So you want it to come up. It's all the way in the upward position. So that's kind of where it wants to be. And there's holes there for that. So I'm tightening it up there. And then there's the one in the bottom that needs to be tightened. Now I'll be taking this back out because I, I want to check all up and around. There's some, there's some, had been some work done in there at one time. And I just want to make sure it's all good before I seal this thing back up again. Let's take her back down and see how she's working in the down position with the weight on the window. Oh yeah, my typical <laughs> electrical hookups here. Wow. There she goes. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's better. It's the weight of the weight of the glass that makes the difference. So let's put her back up. Perfect. Working along pretty spiffy. Yep, I can live with that. Before I did the this work to it, the window will go down like not nearly as fast as it's going down, but going back up would only go to about there. And then I could feel the, feel the leads on my uh, connections getting hot. So it's drawing a lot of power. I didn't have the ignition on or anything. I'm just using my battery pack. But if I had the uh, battery in the car hooked up and using the switch on the, uh, on the, on the console, you would, I would have seen a dimming of the lights inside here, the interior lights, because that meant a lot of load going on. But for now, um, she's going pretty good there and it doesn't seem the leads aren't getting hot at all. I've been paying attention to them and like not taking any power now compared to what it was. Yeah, it was bad before. So that's good. Well, that's it, everyone. Um, last tip for putting this in when you go to put this quarter window back in, uh, just leave the window up a little bit so you can clear that bump stop on the bottom. If you don't, you'll have trouble getting that bottom bolt in. No issue with the top bolt, but you'll need it up just a slight bit amount. Um, now I'm going to go on and do the uh, other side on this. It's doing the exact same thing. So I'm assuming that uh, both sides will have been uh, used just as much and probably just as dirty. Uh, but other than that, I didn't see any big issues in this window. The window's in good shape. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. And thanks a lot for watching, everyone. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.